What's up, family? It's your favorite storyteller, Matt D. Talford, author of From Fear to Faith, The Survivor Story, and Stuck in an Elevator. And in today's short video, I want to have a quick convo with my empaths out there. If you consider yourself an empath, then this video is for you. And especially those intuitive empaths. So those empaths that have these intuitive uh, moon placement, moon and sun placements, or, you know, moon sun rising placements. You know, if you got, typically if you got water in your chart somewhere, you're gonna be a little bit more intuitive than those who do not have, you know, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio in some major placement. Now, uh, what are we talking about today? We're talking about what to do when you cannot transmute negativity, all right? Something upsets you, something bothers you, and you just can't find a way to transmute it. All right, quick story. This morning I had a tennis match against uh, a lady who uh, is notorious for making bad calls, okay? Notorious. And today I was just kind of over it, um, especially when at a critical point she took a point, again, making a bad line call that ended up uh, resulting, you know, in our losing the match two points later. Whereas, uh, you know, you... you and, and tennis is a funny sport for those of you who don't play it. Uh, the dynamics of a point can, can I mean, a, a certain points can shift the whole dynamic of a match. In other words, if you're in a tiebreaker, uh, you win a point. You know you won it because the ball hit the line and the score should be 7-8 on serve in a tiebreaker. But instead, the uh, person cheated and took the point and now you're serving at 6-9. That's a whole different dynamic. That's a whole different dynamic because now you're playing to stay in the match. It's a lot tighter. You're serving at seven, eight, you got a little bit more flexibility, especially if you or, you know, if you're playing singles, you're playing doubles, uh, your partner who is serving has a great serve and, you know, their serve is pretty much like, you know, you're gonna win the points on those serve. You got a high prob probability. Now the dynamics of the match is that two points later, they're gonna be serving to stay in it. So tennis is a funny game. But anyway, this person took a point and I, I was just so pissed off. I didn't wanna shake hands after the match. It's, it's customary to shake hands after the tennis match. I did it anyway in spite of what I wanted to say. What I wanted to say was not gonna be so nice. Um, it, it would have been truthful. It would have been very truthful, but it would not have been nice. So I took the nice route in spite of myself. But we do that a lot as empaths. We, we take the high road so as to keep the energy as calm and as clean as possible. But what happens when you do that? When you're an empath, you can't unsee something. You can't unfeel it. If it's negativity, if it's somebody else's negativity that you absorb, now you're walking around with it. And, um, you know, our role on earth as empaths, of course, is to bring light and shine light into dark places. Uh, and we do that a lot of times by absorbing the negative energies of, uh, you know, people, places, things, areas that we, we find ourselves in. And we transmute those things and turn it into a positive. But again, sometimes you, you just can't find a way to turn something into a positive. So what do you do then? You do what I did when I went home. Um, and this was not something I planned to do. It just kind of happened by divine providence, okay? Here's what happened. And this guy right here about to make me use some transmutation now. He coming all over in my lane and whatnot. Anyway, um, divine providence. What happened was I thought of a half a dozen things that I wanted to say to this person. And I've known this person for years. I like this, I like this girl. I like her typically un until I'm playing against her. And then she just got this bad habit of making bad calls on balls that she can't get to or that she can't return reliably. And so I was just like, man, you know what? I'm gonna call her. And I was like, nah, that ain't gonna work because people who cheat, I mean, lying and cheating kind of go together. People who cheat, you know, they, they're just gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're not gonna say, you know, if they say I'm sorry, they're just telling you what they think you wanna hear. But um, if, uh, if they, typically they're not gonna apologize because they don't think they did anything wrong. And uh, the damage is already done anyway, if you're talking about a match that, that, that is over with. And I'm like, why do some people want to win that bad? There's no money in the line. But anyway, um, thought of a bunch of things I wanted to say, and it hit me. Spirit told me to open up my tablet, open up a notepad, and just start writing. And what I wrote down in that notepad was everything that happened and everything that I would have said to her if I didn't care about, you know, any backlash or, or just lowering the vibration of the area that we were in. And I said, you know, I'm just gonna write this down in this paper. And after I wrote it down, I deleted the note. I deleted the note. I didn't call, I was tempted 
I was tempted to call my wife because she she understands these things. She's a tennis player, but you know, a, a negative energy is like it's a there's a reason why they call people energy vampires. What is the, what is the vampire doing in the movies? He bites somebody else and turns them into a vampire. So when you're dealing with negativity, one of the worst things you can do is call somebody who is potentially having a great day and tell them what happened to you because you're getting it out but now you're giving it to them and unless they're a powerful transmuter you know and, and and we all got people in our circles that we can fight in i'm not telling you not to not to get it off your chest and talk to somebody that you love what i am saying is there are times when you you just don't want to give it to them because it you know it's going to you know create a situation that you do not want to deal with so um, or, or you're going to give them that negative energy and they don't need it. They don't deserve it. So that, that, that's the point. That's what I wanted to say. What I wanted to say is write it down because what happened was when I wrote that thing down and deleted it, when I deleted that note, I felt amazing after that. I felt amazing. Nobody got hurt. No feelings got hurt. And I was able to diffuse that negativity. So sometimes when you cannot transmute, you need to just simply diffuse the negativity. The way I learned that I could diffuse it is by writing it and then destroying what I wrote. And so I just wanted to, I don't know who needed to hear that. Um, somebody needs to hear that, obviously. I mean, I'm an empath and I've been, geez, man. You know, there are times when you just, and and, and one thing about the way I was created, the way that the Most High created me, uh, <laughs> I'm created, he didn't give me quick wit. And I used to pray for that when I was little. I'm like, Lord, why didn't you make me quick with it? I could have gone off on this person right then and there, but I'm the type of person that typically will leave. And I'm like, did they say what I thought they said? Or did they do what I thought they did? That's who I am. And I and I've, I've my whole life, my whole life, y'all, I'm near the half century mark. I don't mind telling y'all that. I'm near the half century mark. Um, my whole life, I've 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 walked away mad and fussing and kicking cans and kicking rocks because I didn't say what I should have said or what I thought I should have said. But the truth of the matter is. I got I got a little bit of fire in me, so uh, you know if I say, you know, what does the Bible say? The Bible says grievous words stir up wrath, right? So you know if I'm quick with it, I'm probably, you know, it's not it's not gonna be pretty. It's not gonna be pretty because I don't listen. I don't look for a fight, but I know how to finish one. That's just who I've always been. And I'm not talking about fist fighting. I'm not telling anybody to go be violent. I mean, I I, I had my share of fist fights when I was a kid, but um, you know now I fight with my words, and I and I and I'm very good at it. I'm very good at it. But uh, everything doesn't require a fight. You know, the, 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 the number one guaranteed way to win a fight is to not, to not, to not have one, not engage in one. So that said, I'm going to wrap it up by saying the same thing again. Y'all, you don't, you don't always have to transmute everything. And some things can't be transmuted. But you got to have the wisdom and the tool set to be able to get that negative energy off of you. Here, this person cheated. That bothered me. And I'm going to tell y'all a quick story and get off of this because the truth of the matter is I did a video some time ago that said vengeance is mine. Um, and that came from the scripture. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. What that scripture is basically saying is that's God. That's the most high telling, telling us in a nice way. Step off my work. All right. Vengeance is mine. I will repay. God is not a man. He should lie. So if he tell you he's going to get him back, he's going to get him back. But if you try to get in it, then you're going to get that karma. You're going to catch that karma yourself. So don't do it. Get out of the way. Let him do his thing. I'm going to say this and I'm going to get off of here. That same thing happened to me years ago where a guy in a tennis tournament took a uh, he took a point for me in a tiebreaker uh, of a, a third set tiebreaker, which is for the match um, in a semifinal. That point that he took gave him a break, a mini break with him serving for the match. And he served it out and won the match by two points. He saw that that call hurt hurt because he, he, he knew he knew that ball that I hit was good but he called it out now here's what he did after the match he walked up to me he shook shook my hand and now this guy calls himself he called himself at the time a believer you know we used to talk scripture and stuff like that this guy says to me he says Matt yeah I'm sorry about that call man he said if we were playing a pickup match I might have let it go but um you know with this being a tournament and all and it count for something I, I I I couldn't let it go man I had to call it out which told me what he saw that the ball was good he just couldn't play it it was a clean winner. He called it out. He saw it was good. Well, lo and behold, I'm there at the tournament for the final to watch him play in the final. And uh, actually, I had another match that day. So when my match was over, I went over and watched him play his final. What happened? He was in a third set tiebreaker. Um, match point with the other guy up. He hit a shot that would have tied the match. It was a clean winner. Guy called his ball out. Clean winner. The ball hit the line. Guy, oh, sorry. It's out. 
And you know what happened? His face turned red. His face turned red. He was livid. But uh, he went, you know, shook the guy's hand, got his second place trophy, and he saw me standing there. And he came over to me and he said, you know what, Matt? He said, I deserve that. He said, because I did the same thing to you and you didn't deserve that. I did the same thing to you yesterday and you did not deserve that. So he said, I guess, uh, I guess God pays us back sooner sometimes than later. And uh, he said, the same thing I did to you, it was done to me and it hurt more because it was in a championship. So he said, brother, I'm sorry. And he gave me a hug. And I was just like, I was just like, what happened here? What just happened? So I'm here to tell y'all, I just wanted to share that story. I don't know who needed to hear it. Listen, when people are doing you wrong, uh, people are cheating, lying, whatever, stealing points in a tennis match or whatever, whatever it might be that's negative that somebody's doing to you. If if you're quick-witted enough, if th there's sometimes you need to call them on their stuff, but there's other times where you don't call them. Maybe you're not quick-witted like me. And there's other times you don't say anything for sake of keeping the temperature at a certain level. I'm here to tell you, the scripture said, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. If he said he gonna repay, he gonna repay. I wanted y'all to see by that example that people get theirs back. And that the best way for you to diffuse negative energy that you picked up from somebody else that um, that uh, that you could not transmute. You could not find it. What is transmutation? Transmutation is taking something negative or taking something that seems to be unusable and turning it into something usable. usable. It's like alchemy. Alchemy, they change one metal into another metal. It's the same thing. Alchemy and transmutation is the same thing. Transmuting, you take it something negative, you turn it into a positive. Sometimes you can't always do that. When you can't do it, write it down and tear the note up or write it on a digital platform and delete it, okay? That's all I got for y'all, man. Tell somebody you love me and mean it. Do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, please uh, subscribe. Uh, no fancy frills today. This one's going straight to YouTube. I'm an award-winning author, guys. There are links in the description box. You can check out my books. You can download free samples of those books on, on e uh, you can download free ebook samples of those books on Apple iBooks and Amazon Kindle. Y'all, uh, tell somebody you love me. Mean it. I love you guys. Thank you so much. The channel continues to grow because of you. Thank you. Uh, God bless y'all. Have a great weekend or whatever time of day or week it is that you're watching this video. Peace.